Hey everyone, this is Shashank. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for uh, subscribing my channel and liking the first video on uh, how to create an IAM user from AWS. So moving towards now, uh, today I'm gonna update you regarding the architectural flow of an IAM. Basically, I just want to show you how the flow happens when you log into an AWS account either through your root user account or an IAM user account. Again, uh, just a brief on the IAM side, it's an identity and access management, a web service provided by AWS, which provides necessary control over your authentication and authorization model of an account. So uh, on the architectural flow, uh, I just created a brief uh, diagram I hope uh, this explains everything to you, uh, clears each and every doubt. So as you can see, I have collected few of the naming convention, uh, such as principal, authentication, request contacts, authorization, actions or operations, and the resources. So I'm gonna explain each and every naming convention uh, so that it will be clear for you how the flow works whenever uh, you log in or uh, whenever you perform some actions either through console or CLI. So let's start. Uh, we'll start with principal. Principal is nothing, it's a user account or a role assigned to the user or a federated user. Uh, whenever you uh, log into an AWS portal, it performs the sign-in function. So whenever you create an AWS account, you give your user ID and password where your user ID considered as a principal. It, when it comes to an IAM, uh, when you create some user, uh, let's say test one, two, three, and you log in with uh, the credentials, then test one, two, three uh, with uh, assigned roles and policies, everything is considered as principal. So whenever principal uh, login, uh, it gets authenticated uh, from backend. So it's like a matching of your user account with your password. So once uh, the authentication can happen from AWS management portal, as well as from CLI or API. So once the principal, uh, when you log into an account, you get authenticated, then you perform some kind of uh, request contact. So when we say request contact, it consists of multiple steps. Whether you want to see EC2 uh, data, whether you want to see EBS data or VPC related data or subnet related data. So that's why uh, request context is acting as a container where we are placing each and every request placed by principle, which consists of actions or operations, resources, environmental data, resource data. So let's let's talk about the first part where we complete like uh, whenever principal login. So let's say um, I have an account Shashank. I logged into AWS portal uh, with my user ID and password. Where Shashank is considered as principal, it gets authenticated with user ID and password match from the backend. Now Shashank as a user ID or account performing or requesting some data. Uh, from AWS resources. We're gonna uh, do the practical as well. So just, just on the theoretical side. So let's say I'm requesting some data from EC2 instance, like IP address, number of CPUs, number of RAMs uh, that are assigned to the server, or which volume is attached to that EC2 instance. So that is, these are the rec uh, information that I'm requesting. Now, if I go ahead and reboot the server, that means I'm performing some actions or operations. I'm doing some operations on that particular resource. So all this combined and kept in a container which we called as a request context. So first part uh, is this, when it goes to the second part. So whenever we perform some actions or operation that is based upon uh, the permissions that we have been given to. So the authorization module is something whether we are allowed to perform something on a specific resources or not. Remember that uh, by default, everything is denied when you create in a user in AWS. So uh, the permission is uh, given to that account is nothing until unless you specify some policies. 
again a term policy come into picture so policy are the set of uh, steps that allow you to uh, perform something so these are the permissions defined within an aws which are written in a json format so when we say authorization uh, it based upon policies whether it is identity based or resource based the uh, one uh, good part with resource based that uh, we can uh, use resource based policy to access the cross account references so like a account can want to access account b in aws then we can uh, use resource based policy and define actions operations based upon condition on which resources then it comes to actions or operations obviously if you want to perform something you want to perform on some specific resources like to modify uh, volumes from 10 GB to 20 GB or 20 GB to 30 GB. So that action that is considered as an action or operations that you are performing on resource named as AWS EBS volume. So everything within this flow is dependent on each other. That's why this shows the architectural flow that happens within backend. So if I uh, summarize this particular uh, flow, then principal login to AWS, either through console or CLI, gets authenticated with a match of user ID and password, request set of uh, things like uh, environmental data, resource data. When we say resource data, it can be anything like a DynamoDB table. We are fetching uh, data from the DynamoDB table. That is considered resource data. Environmental data, like an IP address of EC2 instance, whether SSL is uh, enabled on that particular uh, load balancer or not. Action and operations, again, uh, modifying something or uh, performing some actions like reboot of an EC2, creation of a subnet. Those are considered as action operations. So principal logged in gets authenticated, placed everything in a request context, which is a container, gets authorized based upon the policies, whether you are allowed to perform something or not on the specific resources. After authorization, it goes to the actions or operations part, whether you do something from console or the CLI or API, then on which particular resource, uh, whether it's EC2, IAM, S3, DynamoDB, anything, whatever the resource we have in AWS. Uh, on which resource you want to perform. So this is the basic flow that happens, start from principal with your account, goes to the end on which specific resource you want to perform. I hope this clears uh, uh, the architectural flow of an IAM. So next part is like, uh, I'm gonna show you uh, how this flow happens. So I logged in uh, with an IAM user called Shashank uh, on this particular account ID. So once you logged in, that means you, you the Shashank is called as principal. Authentication happened with my uh, ID Shashank and the password. Since I am authenticated, that's I'm able to see the AWS management console. Now, the second part is authorization. So let's go ahead and, uh, uh, so second part is like uh, resource context, sorry. So resource context is like, I, I am requesting something. Let's go to EC2. Uh, let's go to volume. So here I'm requesting the data, uh, whatever the EC2 instance uh, EBS volumes are present, just show me that. That is kind of a read operation, right? So I can see like I have one volume created by Nimesha. Uh, the descriptions are here like volume ID, uh, size, the creation date, status, everything, whatever we have. Now, these are the things that uh, are getting prepared and kept in a container. The next part is the authorization. So let's go ahead and uh, go to IA module, go to user and see what the policies has been assigned to user Shashan. So as I can see, uh, we have two policies. I am change user password and uh, administrator access. Let's go ahead and uh, check the policy summary. As I uh, 
as I uh, updated you, like uh, all the policies are written in a JSON format. So this is a JSON format that AWS policy has been defined. Even if we create some policy that needs to be created in JSON itself. So it shows that resources on every resources, you can perform every action which the effect is allowed. Since I am administrator, I can go ahead to EC2 instance to EBS volume and check uh, and check what the volumes are present over here and go ahead and update the volume size. Let's say like 20 to 25. Modify. Yes. Okay. Some error. Uh, okay. You have reached the maximum modification rate. Okay. So a few moments back, I modified this from 10 GB to 20 GB. Since uh, this is not aligned because the uh, limit has been reached out. So let's try uh, creating a volume uh, like 5 GB uh, in US East. Name, test, create volume. Here we go. The volume is created. It takes a bit of second to come out. OK, now. So we have test volume. So what we have done now, being an administrator access to Shashank, he create that ID has created a volume. That means he is performing some operations like creation of a volume or actions on which resource volume. Volume is a resource which is an EBS volume, elastic block storage. So uh, EBS is considered as a resource on EBS resource, I have created a volume called test. That means the perform, uh, act, the perform, uh, the operations or the action has been performed on the resource EBS volume after getting authenticated via policy, which is an administrator access on my authenticated account named as Shashank. So uh, this is the same way that uh, we go ahead and uh, create multiple users and uh, assign them the policies and perform some actions or operation on a specified resources. Mm -hmm. So that's it for the theoretical part. Uh, so next video is coming up uh, related to creation of an IAM, assigning groups, creation of a group and assign a user to a group. Then we are, we're gonna assign the roles and policies as well. And we'll see what kind of actions or operation we can perform uh, using that uh, particular new user. I hope you uh, uh, if I hope you have enjoyed this video and uh, do let me know if you have any questions. Please uh, comment it out. Uh, I'll be there for uh, you to reply back as soon as possible. Thank you guys and uh, have a nice day. Bye bye.